Hey guys, Jim here. Time to do a video on another acquisition of mine that I picked up at the Blade Show 2014. And yes, I realize that this is uh, now the uh, middle of August. It has been such a long ride trying to get all of these videos out. And I apologize for those of you that have seen me show a few of these knives on Instagram and you're going, oh, when are you going to make a video? It has just been friggin' nuts. So I apologize and I'm going to keep trying to pump some more out. What we're going to be looking at here today is the asymmetric mid-tech knife made by Custom Knife Factory. And that's the actual name of the manufacturer of these knives. Uh, the designer is uh, Alexei. And I'm going to try to pronounce the name correctly. I apologize. I don't speak Russian. Uh, but Alexei Konigin. It's K-O-N-Y-G-I-N. It could be Konigin or Konigin. So I apologize to the designer for not uh, pronouncing his name correctly. And he's somebody that I've actually been very, very interested in for about a year and a half when I saw his Decepticon knife uh, somewhere on YouTube. And it took probably three months at that time because he wasn't on Facebook like he is now or anything else. It took like three months to track down his email address. And I finally got it uh, thanks to another um, uh, somebody, a fellow uh, knife collector in the community. And I sent him an email. I haven't heard anything back. And I'm, you know, I'm not the kind of really just push. Maybe he didn't get the email. I don't know. But I've been very interested in his work. And I realize that it's expensive, but just incredible design work, unlike anything else. Well, this is another one of his designs that he calls the asymmetric. And it's a good name because every part of this knife is asymmetrical. There is nothing that matches from one side to the other. And it creates something that I feel is unique, something completely different than everything else in my collection. Uh, so what we're looking at basically, we'll talk about the uh, manufacturing and everything else a little bit later on, but let's talk about the basics of the knife first. What you're looking at is a really large knife, even though it's very slender this way and very slim in its width. What you're looking at is an overall length of nine and a half inches. Now, it's not just the handle and blade, but I also am taking into account the way the super deep carry pocket clip comes into play. So from the tip of the clip to the tip of the blade, you're looking at nine and a half inches. The blade length is a touch over four inches, about 4.18 inches in length if you measure from the very end of the frame to the tip. If you go back to the uh, pivot, obviously you're going to get more of a four and a quarter inch length out of it. It's a pretty big knife, but it's extraordinarily lightweight and very, very slim. Uh, they did a limited run on the regular series of only 300 knives, and they priced those at about 450 bucks. This one was made specifically to bring uh, to the Blade Show. I'll try to get it to focus here. Dun, dun, dun. There we go. Blade Show 2014. Limited number of 10 being made for the world. Or for the Blade Show, I should say. So these cost more. These had a table price of about $800 on them. And they had different variations. They had a carbon fiber one. They had a moon glow. I think they had a JG10. Uh, this uh, brown Kieranite. There were, there were a few different uh, variations there. Each one was different from the others. Now, the way it works, and I want to try and clear the air on this because there has been a lot of talk and a lot of confusion. Uh, custom Knife Factory makes mid-tech, and they're also going to be offering custom knives. They're a division of bestblades.ru, the Russian website. And there are plenty of people in this community that have bought knives from them in the past. You're able to get Shiragorovs and things like that directly through them. And uh, they basically started Custom Knife Factory in 2012. But the website, Best Blades, has been around f since about 2008. And what they're trying to do is offer these really wicked, unique Russian designs in a more affordable and more readily accessible package. So the one of the next ones coming up will be a variation, mid-tech variation of the Decepticon knife. Well, everybody that's seen that damn knife wants it, but you would probably spend about four to five thousand dollars to get your hands on one if you possibly could. And when you go to mid-tech where it's more mass produced, then you're able to, obviously there's more of them available, it's going to be easier to obtain, that lowers the cost, and then obviously the cost of the knife itself will be lower because it's not Alexei himself doing that particular knife. So there's a, there's a very big difference right there. Custom Knife Factory is located in Moscow, Russia. 
So they are, you know, right in the heart of all this, and that's why they're able to gain access to these great designers. And I got to tell you, um, when we talk about the way this is built, some people have said these are Chinese built knives and they're this and that. Uh, I did talk to Mike with uh, Custom Knife Factory, and he says, what we're doing is we are outsourcing from a number of different places. And yes, there is one particular manufacturer in China that we are outsourcing certain components of the knife. Now, he wasn't specific as to what parts of the knife. It could be the pivot. It could be the, the, the lock side titanium. I, I don't know what it is. Uh, but he said there are parts that are outsourced from China, which allows for the price to be as low as it is. But everything is done in Russia. The assembly of the knife, uh, all of the blades are hand ground. And you'll see on this that this is a really nice hand rub satin. They did a really nice job on this. It's very clean. I've obviously had custom knives that have had a much finer satin, but I've also had some custom knives in that price range that their satin wasn't quite as nice and consistent. So I think this is a really good middle ground. It's not going to be, you know, mind blowing like picking up, uh, you know, a Tom Mayo or a Brad Southard, but it's not going to really give you a cheap look or feel to it. This is really, in, in my personal opinion, aside from the scale material and uh, the light weightness in the hand, it's going to be very comparable to pulling out a Shirogorov. Now, obviously, you see the action is quite different on the Shirogorov. They're very, very much on top of their detents. This one is a bit of a softer detent. It really wants you to push button it, not really light switch it, but you see it is extraordinarily smooth. So when you give it a nice push button, it's going to give you a nice action. But it is a very long blade, and there's a, most of the weight is back here toward the pivot, not at the uh, tip end, so it doesn't have a lot of that inertia to really allow it to be very, very snappy. But it is really, really, really a nice action. So uh, we got that part out of the way. There are components that do come from China. Everything is done uh, in-house in Russia, and all the quality control and everything else. So if there were, you know, you know quote-unquote, bad Chinese components things that were out of spec, things that didn't work, didn't allow the knife to function properly. All of that's being QC'd in Russia by their knife makers. So any issues that may have been present uh, would have normally been caught at that point. Very, very nice action. Now let's talk about the asymmetric nature of this. We'll start here on the backspacer. I'm going to try to give you the best angles and force of focus here. So you see right in the very beginning that the backspacer is at an angle. So your, your presentation side of the knife is going to be taller, your lock side is going to be shorter, and everything is cut at this angle. Very nice backspacer work here. Very clean, very slightly detectable jump from the titanium lock side to the titanium backspacer. So there's one part of your asymmetric design. Another part will be the spine work of the blade. Now you'll notice here on this flat where they have emblazoned the limited edition status, that is angled down. And then for the top swedge, the top swedge is angled back in the other direction. So now it's kind of tricky. It's pretty damn cool. And that's one of the things I love about this knife. Every time you look at it, it's different than other knives that you own. And it's fun. Then you look at the pattern that's been milled into the titanium. It did a very nice, very rich bronze that's very consistent. A lot of And bronze is really a bitch. Bronze can get splotchy. Bronze can get uh, kind of rosy or brassy in some areas and brown in other areas. This is a consistent tone all the way through. So it would uh, lead me to believe that this is electro anno. It would have to be. And then your pivot is again asymmetrical to the design pattern that's being milled into the titanium. They could have, yes, obviously turned this, lined up certain lines, but the whole point of this, and if you look at the custom, uh, it's the same way, on at least the pictures that I've seen, where the lines are going in a different direction. You guys know me, I'm a sucker for a custom pivot. I love seeing a custom pivot. And they did a really, really nice job on this. The steel on this Again, you're getting all premium materials here. This is S90V, so it's going to have an extraordinary potential for edge retention. It's going to be it's a very sharp out of the box, by the way. They did a great job on the, uh, the sharpening of this. Nice, clean grind. Beautiful satin work. 
and having the S90 steel gets you into a premium knife. If this were S35 VN, they could have probably charged, I don't know, probably a good hundred dollars less, but they went for the premium materials. Now again, there were a lot of different presentation sides available. This was the one that jumped out at me. I, I currently have no items uh, in my folder collection in Kiranite. I have one... Yes, I have one fixed blade, a small EDC fixed blade that has some Kiranite in it. And I thought it was gorgeous. It also filled a, a need that I had in my collection. I didn't have a lot of browns and bronzes in my collection at that time. I obviously have more now. I love looking at it from the lock side. That is just gorgeous. Now, the only nitpicks I can really make on it are, yes, I personally prefer a stronger detent. Okay, so that's just me. And you guys know that I absolutely and completely despise a deep carry pocket clip. I have no need for a knife to ride that low in my pocket. I'm not trying to hide it from anybody. I'm not trying to be tricky about it. But this is one of the few knives where it's got just enough for me to grab onto without applying more pressure and keeping it in the pocket, you know, stronger. I can actually grab this and pop it out without a problem. A lot of times with a deep carry pocket clip, the only thing that you have to grab onto is your, your frame and then you end up pinching the clip, which pinches it tighter into the pocket. That's why I just cannot stand them. I have no way to really get it out easily. I like having something for my hand to grab onto in some fashion. So they did a really nice job making this a deep carry clip that was actually somewhat accessible. Let's give you so let's give you some size comparisons. We'll bring out the Model 95T Shirogorov side by side. You'll see it is quite a bit longer than the Shirogorov, but they're just about the same in the length. Uh, another slim knife that I carry and love. I have a multitude of Norsemans now. If you guys haven't heard the story on that, you're going, holy shit, Jim has a Norseman? Uh, yeah, I've actually got a few of them, and uh, I did make videos, and you'll see why I fell in love with them so much. Uh, so both of these are going to be shorter in overall length than the asymmetric. So we'll get those out of there. See, that's another reason I love these, all that action. That is just sexy as hell. And the only production knives I have left in my entire collection are just two of the ZT0801s. Here's the 0801 CF. So I can give you a side-by-side -side comparison to a much more commonly available knife. And you'll see it is tremendously longer. This is a big knife to wield. Yet it's lighter in weight than this 0801. And here's really where that's coming into play. It's super slim. Now, I wear a size large glove. And you see my fingers want to go all the way around this thing. It is a very, very skinny handle. This is not the typical size of knife that I would normally carry as an EDC because of that. Uh, I'm gonna, it's going to be a little harder for me to get a really strong grip on it. Now, since I don't really do any hard use, I'm not out there whittling on anything. I'm not doing anything. It requires a great degree of strength in the cutting where I'm worried about it twisting and torquing. I don't have to worry about that so much. If you are, if this is going to be an EDC for you that needs to do absolutely everything, and you know that at times you do have that need where you're cutting into something really tough and it cannot twist in your hand, if you've got a hand as large as mine, this may not be the best choice for you. Now, the way that the ergonomics are done on it, it will actually rest in the hand nicely without any need for jimping or anything else. So, you know, if you have somewhat of a medium or small sized hand, you're going to love this. It's going to be fantastic. I just can't get over how sweet that action is for a mid-tech knife. And we've all been down that road. We all have mid-techs in our collections and some are better than others. And there will be some inconsistency. And I would assume so uh, for these as well. They will be fairly, not fairly, but they will be somewhat inconsistent from knife to knife. The three that I personally handled at the show all had similar actions as far as the detent strength, as far as the fluidity uh, by using the bearing system, So in though, and the lock bar tension. As far as all those went, they felt the same. But there's obviously going to be 300 of the regular version, and I'm sure there is going to be a degree of inconsistency among them. I like the knife a hell of a lot. It is really, really, really easy to carry. For the days that you want to have a larger knife on you, but you don't want to feel burdened, this is a great choice. 
Kieranite is extraordinarily lightweight and they offer other things like carbon fiber and, and G10 that are equally as lightweight. And then you've got a nice solid titanium lock side. We'll show you the lock engagement and the thickness of the lock bar. So you've got a nice early, actually not really early lock up, it's just about 50%. And you see you've got a lot of meat here to that titanium lock. They've relieved right around the lock bar and there is a tab the way that this comes up. So you don't have to try and get your thumb down into the lock. You can just swipe it right across and you'll be able to manipulate it quickly and easily. I like that a lot. Very, very well thought out there and very well executed. Everything, again, it's going to be asymmetrical. This side is slimmer than this side. The backspacer being angled. So you've got a more of a a unique feeling in the hand. You will feel that a little bit that this is higher than this. Not enough to be cumbersome, but enough to make you aware that there is a difference in the height of the materials. I think overall the construction quality uh, certainly lives up to its price. Now again, I think it would exceed the price that you would spend typically on a $450 mid-tech. There are not a lot of those out there. I think the finish work that's been provided is higher grade than a comparable price point mid-tech. You know, really the only mid-tech out there that is in my mind, the only two are the uh, De Villiers Butcher mid-tech and the, uh, the John Graham Razel. Those are done with much more, I guess you could call them working finishes, especially the razel. Nothing particularly fancy. You're not getting hand rubbed satin or anything like that. You're not getting custom pivots. So I think that in its price point, uh, it's kind of standing alone. Now this variation being the more limited of only 10 and being at $800, I think it's very, very close to what you would expect on a six to $700 custom. Once you hit that $800 mark in a custom, that puts you in a different world. So I think it would have to have a little bit more going on to give you that same level of quality. But then again, you could always argue the cost of the steel could really be that uh, point of differentiation. You know, you might buy into a really nice custom that has some really cool custom touches, but it's got an S35 VN blade. There's nothing wrong with that, but the cost is lower. So getting into an S90 blade, that may be enough there for you to say, okay, now it's worth more than, you know, the 700 I assumed. It would be worth the 800 because it has the S90. So that's entirely up to you. For me, I'm very happy with it in my collection. And you will be seeing a lot more of these in my collection. Uh, I am on the list for an asymmetric. I cannot wait to get that. I'm sorry, for the uh, Decepticon knife. I cannot wait to get that. And that was the first time I had reached out to Mike. And I got to tell you, it's stunning. I did get to play with one example that he had with him at the Blade Show. And I can't wait to get one in my pocket. So that was the knife that initially got me interested in how I discovered them. And then this ended up being the first knife out of their quote-unquote factory. Yes, I do realize that having the name Custom Knife Factory almost seems argumentative, custom and factory. You gotta realize they're Russians, they're, they're, this is being translated to English, they're appealing to an English market. If this was somebody in the US and you know spoke English every single day as their first language, they probably would have picked a different name. So for us, it sounds kind of strange, but I could tell you this, if you've looked at them and thought to yourself, well, I don't really know if I wanna spend $450 on one of these, I'm going to tell you right now, it is worth that and probably more. It's going to be a nice piece in your collection that's going to be fun to play with. It's going to be fun to carry. It's going to be unique. Even if you're going into some sort of gathering of knife buddies, there probably aren't going to be a lot of guys there that have ever seen this knife, either custom or mid-tech, in the flesh. Notice also that there is a lanyard post back here as well. So you have the full, well, not really full backspacer, but three-quarter backspacer. Then you have a lanyard post. So if you prefer having a lanyard, you're good to go. If you don't ever use a lanyard, you don't have a big hole loop or protruding backspacer with a loop getting in the way of the, the overall design. And that's really what this knife is about. It's about the design. It is totally kick-ass. Some people are going to like it. Some people aren't. What I would tell you to do, though, is visit uh, customknifefactory.com 
or check out their Instagram, which is, again, at Custom Knife Factory, and take a look at the other models that they're going to be coming out with. And if you're into something a little bit funky, a little bit different, you like the Russian design look, then they're probably going to have something for you that you'll be interested in, and probably in a price point that you're more comfortable with spending. For me, I'm going to have more in the future. And until they've proven me wrong, I'm probably going to keep buying. Right now, my opinion is very high. I like the quality, I like the action, and I like the uniqueness. The other reason I'm more excited about the Decepticon knife is it's a little bit thicker, a little bit beefier in the hand. This is one that I've only really carried this maybe seven or eight times in the past uh, two and a half months. So it's not in my pocket every single day. But the times that I have carried it, I've been very happy that I had it with me. And the couple times I've had a chance to show it to people, everybody just said the same thing. Wow, I've never seen anything like that. And then when I point out the things that are really different, these asymmetric cuts, the way the knife is actually built, then they have even more respect for it. And you know what? That's what it's all about. It's about having fun and sharing the experiences and maybe exposing people that you know to things that they haven't ever seen before. At least that's part of the fun for me. And that's why I do my YouTube channel here. So there you go, guys. There is your look at the Asymmetric Knife by Custom Knife Factory. And I'll see you guys on the next video.